Hello! In this video, I'm going to perform an experiment to see how easy it is to actually corrupt data on a floppy disk using a variety of magnets. And because why not, I'm also going to test an iPhone. So first, let's have a look at the assortment of magnets I've gathered. So first, we have a circular ferrite magnet. These were the most common type of magnet that I'd seen when I was younger. It measures around 17.5mm across and it's 3mm thick. Next up, a ferrite block or bar magnet. This one feels a little bit stronger than the circular one and measures 20mm long by 11mm wide and 6mm thick. Now moving on to some stronger magnets, this teeny tiny disc magnet is a neodymium magnet and for its size it's actually quite strong. It's only 5mm wide and 0.8mm thick. After this, we have a slightly larger disc magnet, again made from neodymium, this being just under 12mm wide and 1.8mm thick. And the last of these disc magnets is this one which is just under 20mm wide, but it's also the same thickness, 1.8mm. Now this crazy magnet that I'm bringing in here, this is actually part of a pair designed to clip onto the glass so you can clean the inside of a fish tank. And as you can see it wasn't the easiest thing to remove from the ruler either, it's a little bit of a beast. I've no idea what type or size of magnet this actually has inside, but it sure is strong. And last up, the iPhone. Now you might think this is a somewhat rather strange idea, but a few years back Apple introduced a thing called MagSafe charging. In an attempt to make wireless charging more efficient, because it really isn't, the Apple engineers embedded some magnets inside the iPhone case to help perfectly align the charger to the phone. Now adding those magnets is actually a really good idea. Don't believe me that they're there? Well, take a look at this. Here I have a bag of iron filings. I'm sure some of you will have seen these at school years ago. Now I'm going to bring in my iPhone and a transparent homemade tray because these things get everywhere if you're not careful. Now watch as I pour just a small amount into the tray. See the big ring around the Apple logo? That's where the wireless charger latches onto and it's the most optimal place to charge from. It's also interesting that there's a few other magnetic areas. I don't know what these are, possibly it could be some kind of microphone, speaker or something to do with the haptic feedback. Taking a look at a teardown, you can see the MagSafe magnetic ring and a vertical magnet too, which I suspect is to hold the phone upright when it's in some kind of docked charger. Way back when I was younger, we were constantly told to keep magnets away from floppy disks. I even remember a comment in a magazine about putting stickers on envelopes saying things like magnetic media, do not x-ray, although I think it was confirmed that x-ray scanners couldn't really damage the disc anyway. Now I've never had a disc suddenly go bad like this and I want to know how strong a magnet actually needs to be in order to successfully damage or perhaps even wipe fully a disc. And this made me wonder, if for some random reason you happen to have your iPhone in your pocket along with a floppy disk, yes I know these days that's very unlikely, but it's possible you may actually put a floppy disk down on top of your iPhone, how likely is it to damage the data? Well, firstly, I think we need to find a way to understand how strong these magnets actually are. What I've set up here is a very crude gauze meter, that's the measure of magnetic strength. This here is a 49E Hall effect sensor whose output voltage varies with magnetic strength. It can also tell the difference between a north and south pole of a magnet. Now I've got this connected up to an Arduino Uno and an LCD screen, and with a little bit of maths I can make it display a rough estimate value of the strength. You'll notice I've got a transparent box over the top. When measuring the strength I want to measure them all from the same distance to the sensor as the strength changes with distance. And that sensor is quite sensitive, see how even the magnetic tip of a screwdriver is detected. So we'll start with the small circular ferrite magnet, and it looks like it peaked around 103. Next up, the little bar magnet, which it seems to peak at around 231, confirming my suspicions that it's slightly stronger. After this, the teeny tiny neodymium magnet, and whilst it's quite powerful, at this distance it barely registers anything, peaking at around 25. Then we have the medium sized neodymium magnet, which seems to peak at around 187. And now onto the larger one, which I am surprised only reaches about 193. Now let's try the iPhone, and as best as I can it's a little bit tricky. It looks like this is sort of somewhere between 40 and 80 ish, but that could be completely out. I did momentarily see it hit over 100 for a fraction of a second, but I'm not holding this out to be very accurate. There might be a whole lot stronger than that. Lastly, the crazy fish tank cleaner thing. 
I had a close look and it looks like it actually has two magnets inside of it. The first one seems to peak at just over 700 and the second one 913 and I think that may have maxed out the sensor so it's probably more than that. Okay, so we have an understanding of the various magnets. So the way I'm going to perform this test is to write an image onto the disc, then read it back to prove that it actually is reading properly. Then I'm going to slide a magnet randomly all around the surface of it, and then I'm going to try reading it again to see if any of the data has been affected. Before I start the tests, I want you to guess which is going to cause the most damage. And note that I've added the boing ball in here too, as I'll be using its base. I want you to pause the video now and make your guess. Did you write something? Excellent, on with the testing. Wow, that was actually quite interesting, and a little surprising too. So let's see if you guessed correctly, and we'll have a look at the results. And we'll start with that ferrite circular magnet. It's far too weak to do any damage. I find this quite interesting, as this was the kind of magnet that I had laying around when I was younger, and it doesn't look like it would have ever caused any problems. Next up, the small bar magnet. Whilst being stronger, it couldn't do any damage either. So let's move over to the tiny neodymium magnet, and that didn't seem to cause a problem. However, moving up to the medium sized magnet, that did, and it caused quite a lot. 43% of the sectors became unreadable. That's quite amazing, and spread across every track on the disc. Now on to the larger one, which had a slightly stronger strength, but caused less damage. It was interesting that the higher the track number, the more damage it caused. This is not really surprising, because as the head gets closer to the centre of the disc, the density of the data increases, so it's probably easier to affect it. Now, the one that you've waited for, the iPhone. Well, it looks like it did some damage. Not much, I admit, but I really did give the disc a good workout on the back of the phone. Now onto the beast, the fish tank cleaner. This thing is crazy, and it damaged nearly every track and 67% of the sectors. However, the base of my boing ball didn't do anything at all, and I was really surprised by that, although I don't think it would have done so well if I'd actually used the ball itself with its big magnet underneath. Now I suppose you can't read into these results that much, it wasn't exactly that scientific the way I was applying the magnet to the disc. I'm sure some discs probably got more exposure than others. But just seeing that any damage at all was caused was actually quite interesting. Well that was a surprise, the iPhone can cause some damage. Admittedly it didn't do too much, and being 100% honest it actually took me several attempts to make that happen with me re-recording it over and over again. And I don't know if it was a certain movement or speed that caused it to show errors, but it probably isn't that likely to happen, so you probably don't need to worry about it too much. This all reminds me of those moments in older films when law enforcement turns up to some computer hacker's door, and they desperately run around trying to wipe all the data off their floppy and hard drives in multiple different ways. In this case, a toaster, a microwave, what looks like some kind of degaussing device, or maybe a bulk wiping device too, and even the garbage disposal unit. If you didn't recognise that clip, it's from the film The Core. Those bulk erasing devices do exist, and Techmoan made a video about several of them for instantly wiping and bulk erasing audio cassettes. 
one of them looked just like the one used in that film. Regardless of how strong the iPhone's magnets actually are, it's probably best to avoid all the magnets. Mind you, these days, who walks around with floppy disks in their pocket anyway? And with that note, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.